There we go. So Norton Shores, yes, uh, great place to be. I've been uh, lucky enough to be the mayor since 2009 when I ran and uh, been elected a few times, uh, a couple more times, and so my term goes till 2025, uh, which would complete four terms, 16 years as mayor of Norton Shores. Um, you know, Mark and I talked about this. Some people don't really, Norton Shores is kind of quiet. Where are we? What do we do? Uh, we're a former township, 24 square miles. Um, you know, people ask uh, when I'm out and about in the state, Michigan Municipal League meetings, those sort of things, where's Norton Shores? I always say it's between Muskegon and Grand Haven. And then they say, oh yeah, oh yeah, I've been to Hoffmaster, uh, or I used to go to Maranatha when I was a kid. So um, Norton Shores is relative, so I'm gonna give a little history of the city. So relatively young, we've been a city only since 1968, township before that. Back in the day, we were actually part of Ottawa County. Um, we've got, uh, like I said, 24 square miles. We've got six miles of Lake Michigan Beach, 150-ish uh, miles of roads that we need to maintain. Got uh, three public school districts that are part in Norton Shores, a small part of Muskegon Public Schools. Uh, about 25% of the land mass of the city is Grand Haven Public Schools. Uh, but then uh, Bill O'Brien's here. We have a great relationship with Mona Shores Public Schools, which is predominantly uh, the, the biggest school district in the city and uh, great relationship. They're a great school district, so they work together in partnership as we're trying to attract people to live into the city. It's helpful to have great schools, so thanks, Bill. Go Sailors. Um, where's Norton Shores? So if you can think about it, so Sherman Boulevard south to the county, Ottawa County line. Lake Michigan, obviously, if you go too far west, you're gonna get wet, so we end at Lake Michigan, and then Harvey Street to the east. So, give you a little where we're at. Um, we've got about 114 full-time employees, about 40 part-time employees. Um, and I compare that just so you can get a kind of feel. We do, we do everything we think very efficiently, very well. Uh, some of our um, neighboring communities, City of Muskegon has about 359 employees. City of Grand Haven even has about 200 employees. So, a little demographics. Oh, I got this little clicker, I know. And you gotta go down to go up, I've been told, so. Ooh, there we go. So, here's the population growth for the city, 1990 census, I won't read all that, up to the 2020 census and what's considered the 2021 estimate. Norton Shores has been on a continuous growth path with uh, population um, for many years now, and uh, one, of, one of only communities actually in the county that have grown consistently over, uh, over about 20 years. Um, there's a belief that Norton Shores is kind of older community. Uh, Norton Shores is actually the average age. I, I looked it up on the Census Bureau today. If you got extra time in your life, dig around the Census Bureau website. It's really exciting. Um, but the average age uh, in Norton Shores is, uh, is only 41 years old, and actually 57% of our total population is less than 45 years old, so under 45. Um, so lots of families, 30% of Norton Shores uh, Residents have a bachelor's degree or higher, according to the Census Bureau. And um, we have uh, a median household income of about $65,000. $65,000, yes, bro. All right, so one thing that we, we say we're quiet and things that we do is we talk about state equalized value and the valuation of property taxes, you know, which is, for us is kind of a reflection on how we're growing and what the what the city's worth, if you will. And so you can see in, uh, in about 20 years, um, you know, we've grown, gone from about 600 million in state equalized value, we've more than doubled that to 1.3 million. Uh, I became mayor in 2009, so I think that's probably close. Uh, Mike's pointing at the clock, you know, that, there's a reason for that, I should say. And, uh, um, but just for comparison's sake, again, these are just numbers that are out there. You know, the equalized value of the city of Norton Shores is 32% higher than the city of Muskegon and 26% higher than the city of Grand Haven. So where we're between the two. Um, and then uh, um, I'm gonna turn this over to Mark, but one thing that I'll talk about economic development, we have no economic development team. We don't have an economic development employee, a dedicated employee. It's just one of Mark's uh, additional job duties. So he handles economic development as well as being the uh, city administrator, so I'll turn it over to Mark. All right, thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you, Rotary, for the opportunity to talk about my favorite subject. Um, 
I didn't realize that um, we were as young as we are, Mayor. Um, apparently, I'm, as I approach 60, I'm bringing the average down, apparently. So I started at, I was 31 years old when I started with the city in 1995. So, um, so thank you for setting this up, uh, Mayor. I'm going to talk about some of the economic development, and I'm going to um, uh, talk about residential growth, commercial growth, and industrial growth, and I'll end with some city projects, quality of life projects, and some branding. Um, so first I'm going to talk about housing. You've probably heard uh, that, you know, nationally, statewide, West Michigan, um, Kent, Ottawa, Muskegon, we have a housing shortage. And even though we're a growing community, we are certainly no different. Um, take a look at the uh, housing statistics here. These are the last four fiscal years, and these are um, very small numbers uh, for certain. To put it in perspective, in 1999, we had the highest uh, number of new homes built in the city, 160 in a single year. Then, of course, the recession hit. Um, those numbers went down immediately to, I think, in 2010, about nine homes. Um, but after a couple of years after the Great Recession, it rebounded to anywhere from 50 to 60 new homes over the next five or six years. Um, and really housing, not, not just in Norton Shores, but in the area is really an impediment to future growth. If people can't find a place to live, employers are not gonna find employees to fill positions and so on and so forth. So the lack of housing is a real challenge to future growth. Um, what really what occurred too is in the 90s everyone was getting into housing you know you had law firms getting into housing you had franchise restaurant owners getting into housing um, a lot of them did not make it through the Great Recession so after the recession those builders that were still around and uh, basically built uh, infill housing they bought lots from former developments that didn't make it through the recession well, in Norton Shores, that infill housing has occurred. Um, there really aren't many stray lots here and there in housing developments. So in, in all sectors, multifamily, single family, um, uh, apartments, uh, so on and so forth, even senior housing, we haven't seen new developments uh, since the mid 2000s. Now, um, fast forward, even though these numbers are low, the, the outlook is good even in this um, current economy uh, because the city has approved uh, site plans that represent 780 units of new housing. And that's the good that's the good news. The bad news is not all of those will get built um, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. So I want to highlight a few of um, our housing developments. The first one uh, Ellis Landings, uh, this is unique. Now, as we look at housing, we don't want all single-family housing, for example, all 780 units. We want a mix of housing so that it's affordable and so that it meets uh, different demographics, whether you're young first-home buyers, whether you're um, uh, perhaps you know empty nesters and looking for a condo and, and not maintaining a, um, a large home lot. So uh, I want to point out Ellis Landings, but I want to ask a question. Does this look like a mobile home to you? Um, because it is. And so Ellis Landings is a 47-unit mobile home park. Now, 20 years ago, so, so we're a former township. We have, what, Mayor, four, four or five, I've lost count, mobile home parks um, that were built as far back as the 40s. And so 20 years ago, if you had said, Mark, how about a new mobile home park in Norton Shores? I would have said you were crazy. But, you know, the housing market is different. Housing prices are high. Um, this is a West Wind construction development. West Wind is out of Grand Haven. They have a great history of uh, building uh, quality um, developments, um, and they're fairly new to housing. So they are building a 47-unit mobile home park. Uh, it's Ellis Road uh, near US 31. Uh, it's a property that they had planned to develop into uh, office, but of course, uh, office space is, is not something that's in demand right now. So we're looking forward to that. 
Then I want to mention Atwater Springs. So here's a development. Um, it was a private-public partnership um, uh, on a former uh, private um, campground with a pond in the northeast corner of Norton Shores. It, uh, it's at the corner of um, Fruitport Township and Spring Lake Township. Um, had a new developer, worked with us, helped pay to get sewer there. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's stalled a bit. Um, they were building very high-end homes, $650,000 homes. And uh, so uh, most recently, um, Wheelfish Group and Frank Peterson, Frank's here today, um, came to the city and they are in the process of purchasing it. Uh, but what they've done is uh, working with the city, we've amended the site plan to go from 53 units to 86 units in building these uh, narrow homes instead of on 60 plus foot lots on 33 foot lots. So uh, I think the closing's coming up soon. And Frank had said that uh, they were hoping to completely build this out within 36 months and certainly uh, we hope to see that happen. So I will move on to um, some multifamily residential. Uh, so east town of, of Norton Shores, the story there, that's um, Seminole Road and Seaway Drive. It's a former mixed-use development um, that stalled during the Great Recession uh, and in fact was going nowhere. Um, the city um, approached the bank that owned uh, the majority of the vacant property there and we were able to purchase, the city was able to purchase uh, seven vacant properties, pennies on the dollar. We paid $60,000 plus 60000 in back taxes to acquire $5.1 million principal and interest of property. And we hired a um, broker to market that um, and we've just approved a site plan for a 120 unit um, apartment community and uh, we hope to uh, close, it's, it's a, both a Hudsonville uh, developer and also a Holland developer uh, working on that project. We hope to close on that by the end of the year. 815 uh, is uh, at Judson and Grand Haven Road, 144 um, condo unit community. Uh, and then Muskegon Associates, this is one of those that may not get built. Um, Muskegon Associates is the former Kmart property. Um, oh. <laughs> Everybody knows where that is, right? Um, and uh, this was approved two years ago and then the pandemic hit. I'm told by the developer it's a real project, um, but they're just waiting out the market to see what happens with construction costs. Then senior living. Uh, we, it's been at least 17 years since we've had a senior living center uh, built in Norton Shores. We currently have two going up, um, uh, one on Harvey Street if you've driven by, you've seen it. Uh, another one will be in the East Broadway area on Volk. Uh, we have to make some improvements to the water um, capacity there to get that built. But certainly, um, and I'm an example, we're, the seniors are a growing uh, demographic uh, in Norton Shores and elsewhere. And um, we're glad to see this housing coming online uh, as it will be more in demand in the future. And then uh, commercial development, uh, Toast and Jams, I'm sure you're all familiar with that restaurant. They relocated to the East Town development um, and seem to be thriving there as well. Uh, the former Verdoni's restaurant, uh, Chipotle Mexican and Grill. We, Norton Shore, you know, we're a suburb and I don't know if this is indicative of suburbs, but we seem to attract a lot of national chains, um, but we're often the first uh, for the Muskegon area. So Chipotle Grill is, is one of those. Salty Pecker Brewing, we finally have a brewery. Um, those are local residents that uh, created that in a former um, uh, coffee shop in the East Town development. Tommy's Car Wash, car washes are not sexy, you know, I'll admit it. But I will tell you, if you haven't been through it, it's probably the most sophisticated car wash uh, you'll, you'll ever go through. The control panel looks like a 747 cockpit or something. Uh, Camp Bow Wow, that's um, for, for those of you who have been in the community for a while, the former Hobnob restaurant that burned down 20 years ago um, near uh, on Pontaluna and Chamber Drive near 31. Camp Bow Wow is um, a doggy daycare. So another first, I, I think, to the area. 
And then King Crab is the former Logan's on Harvey Street, finally opening after months and months of, um, has anybody been there? Is it good? It's good? All right. We'll have to go. And then um, let me talk about industrial growth. Um, you know, I think historically people think of Norton Shores as a bedroom community, and certainly we have uh, great housing stock, we have beautiful neighborhoods, uh, but we are far more than just a bedroom community. Um, you know, we, I just talked about the commercial development. We have, you know, Harvey Street and Henry Street commercial districts that we share with other municipalities, um, and uh, those are thriving. Um, but we also have five industrial parks. We have three public parks, we have two private parks, um, and we are a leader in job growth uh, in the area. Uh, I'll mention Smart Vision Lights, uh, moved here from Holton, um, doubled in si about three years ago, doubled in size um, in about a year, year and a half. Um, Seal Bond, and, and let me mention, in the last three years, we've had probably a half dozen manufacturers move to uh, Norton Shores, to the county, from North Ottawa and elsewhere. So, you know, we're attracting um, manufacturers, and they're coming here really for two reasons. One, uh, they want new facilities, larger facilities uh, for growth. Also, they want to be closer to their workforce because much of their workforce comes from Muskegon County. So, um, clever innovations, um, for example, um, the clever cutter. Um, invented by Orville Crane, as you may know. Uh, it's moving from Grand Haven. They're on the south end of Grand Haven, and I've heard this from others that have moved here. They, their employees don't like driving down Beacon Boulevard and getting stuck in traffic uh, every day during rush hour. They're bringing 74 employees, and then they're gonna add 20. Um, La Colombe and Seal Bond are going to go into a new 200,000 square foot uh, facility built by Robert Gruder's development. Um, La Colombe is the coffee roaster out of Philadelphia that moved here in 2017, uh, purchasing the for former Arla Cheese um, uh, factory, and they're just growing leaps and bounds. They started with 50 employees in 2017. They're going to be over 300 um, within the next two years. Uh, and this is actually their second uh, expansion this year. They have another 50,000 square foot expansion. And then Midwest Double X, that's a West Wind construction project. That's unique because uh, they purchased uh, about 13 acres of city owned industrial property uh, that the city was able to um, purchase and uh, amass, if you will. Um, part of that is due to the help of GMED, so I want to give them credit. Um, they received an MEDC grant on our behalf to help purchase some of that property. Uh, West Wind has recently purchased it and uh, is planning to build two new um, 50 to 80,000 square foot uh, manufacturing facilities there. That's on uh, the east side of Grand Haven Road between Sternberg and Mount Garfield Road. There is a photo of the Seal Bond and La Colombe building. Now I want to touch on some uh, city projects. You know, the city, you know, we're here to, you know, create a, a good environment where people want to, you know, work, live, and play. Um, the Seminole Road Place Plan is uh, a, a plan that we did for Seminole Road Corridor. We're a um, a suburb where we don't have a downtown, so we wanted to create a sense of place. So we chose Seminole Road between Henry Street and Seaway Drive to be that place. Um, did a target market analysis to help attract the right mix of goods and services to the area. It sparked um, Kmart finally coming down uh, after a dozen years and uh, Trinity Health building a new uh, healthcare facility there. It sparked um, the city acquiring uh, the, the property in East Town, um, and it also includes a streetscape. So if you've been down that road, we've got a newly constructed road, curb gutter. We filled in the, the ditches, the drainage ditches, and, and built sidewalks. We put in benches and ornamental lighting, uh, trying to create that sense of place. Um, and we're just, next month, we'll finish up the second phase of that streetscape. Uh, Ross Park Pavilion and Overlook Deck. Um, well, here's our Seminole Road place plan. You see the ornamental lighting and banners there. 
Ross Park, uh, we've got a pavilion that was built in the mid 70s and it's been obsolete for at least a decade. And so we're going to uh, reimagine that. And here's a rendering of a uh, new indoor space. We're also gonna create a very large overlook deck with unobstructed views of Mona Lake. Um, we'll have seating out there. We'll even have, you see in the uh, bottom right corner, we'll have a fire pit and Adirondack chairs. And we hope that this will really be a gathering place. And I'm gonna wrap up. This might not look like economic development, but um, it's unique because um, it's not often you get to build a cemetery. So our cemetery filled up. Last, I think last month we sold the last burial site. Um, and uh, so we purchased 11 acres at the end of Ellis Road. This is across from Ellis Landings. And you're seeing the first phase here of um, the, a new road going in and of the area cleared and I will end with our, our branding. Unfortunately, Jason isn't here. On your tables, we've got posters. And uh, if you, there's a QR code. If you put your mobile device over that, it'll bring you to a new um, Norton Shores Living website. Um, and uh, you'll see our new branding, um, new logo, tagline, uh, really playing up our natural resources and parks. Uh, you see a sign there. We've um, made new park signs incorporating the brand. And if you want any swag, stop by uh, City Hall and I'll hook you up with a t-shirt, hoodie. Uh, we've got beer glasses and wine glasses for after work. And with that, looking forward, um, Todd Jacobs is here. You know, I talked a lot about housing and I wanna give Todd um, some credit for taking some leadership through the Community Foundation um, we are going to um, do a uh, community-wide or, or actually county-wide housing study to help determine um, what our housing needs are. How many units are we missing? What type of housing do, do we need to attract to fill that need? Uh, so with that, I'm getting a hook. <laughs>